Open fires are the most inefficient way to heat a home. Around 12% of Irish homes still burn solid fuels such as peat, wood and coal. But this accounts disproportionately for approximately 70% of our air pollution. How do we shift from solid fuels to cleaner alternatives? I'm in Templemore to meet Paul Kenny from the Tipperary Energy Agency to learn about a pilot programme that could provide the solution to this problem. Welcome to Tipperary, yeah. Thanks, Emil. And then tell me, what kind of things are you specifically doing in the houses? Well, maybe I should just show you. Perfect, right. thanks, Paul. Let's, Let's go. go. Have a look. We're on our way to see a pilot scheme that's being trialled in the homes of people with respiratory health issues, such as COPD and asthma. This scheme is providing deep retrofits to reduce energy usage in the home, as well as drastically improving the indoor air quality by removing solid fuel burning fireplaces and stoves. This is Paul O'Brien, is one of the contractors who does the work here. Let's watch our Stefano coming in here. This is into the kitchen here. Okay, yeah. perfect. You oh. see. I can feel the warmth already, that's so nice. So Paul, I can see this kind of artefact behind us here. What was this? This is actually an old Stanley range, which was probably in most of our houses when we were growing up. The homeowner here was just burning turf, actually 24-7, 365 days a year, even in the summer weather, like he was heating his hot water with the Stanley range here. So. Was this heating the whole house? He, he just, it was only heating two rooms in the house, so the rest of the house then was, was cold. Oh so you'd come in here, it was melting, and then upstairs was very cold. I'll just show you the sitting room here where we closed up. There was an open fire here and as you see we've it all, all plastered up so he's not, there'll be no more light and um, open fires here again either. You can see evidence of where the wallpaper here was rising a little bit for some dampness inside in the house and even on the carpet like you know. Well you can really see the carpet there, that's, that's genuinely black. That just looks like it must have been really unhealthy to be in here. Yeah, well, like, when the rooms aren't being heated to a proper temperature, like, you will have dampness building up. So the air quality in this house, like, is going to be um, a lot better because, as well, we put in the demand control ventilation and uh, a constant heat inside in the house. So this is a, an air source heat pump. So essentially what it does is cold air comes in the back and maybe six or seven degrees in the winter and comes out about three degrees at the front. So it pulls the energy out of the air from outside and then heats that up to a higher temperature and puts it into the house using a compressor. So this is exceptionally efficient, really. I mean, you're stealing the tiny bit of heat we have outside here and you're using it for your house. Yeah, it's the, by far the most efficient, cheapest way to heat a house. That's amazing. Can I have one, please? When do we start? <laughs> Thank you. Advanced ventilation, insulation and air tightness will raise these houses to an A energy rating standard and eliminate all emissions from the home. One of the first houses to be completed under the pilot programme was Aileen McCarthy's in Cullen. Aileen was diagnosed five years ago with COPD. I went to see if the retrofit has benefited her health. And tell me a little bit about what it was like before any of the renovations were done. I used to have an open fire. I found that the coal, the smuts from the coal, the ashes and the fumes from it were um, catching me and I was getting all congested with phlegm which then I'd have another chest infection. And then tell me then for someone with a condition like yours like COPD what has this meant for your life? I find since this was done I don't need oxygen as much during the day you know in the morning I just needed a lot after getting up of course you'll be at the ashes of the fire and you'll be you know. So you don't have to do that either anymore? I don't have to do any of that no more so it's marvellous. And my own doctor is happy with me because um, I don't be in there that often with chest infections anymore. So Aileen then, um, does your husband like the new house and the new environment? Well, John now wouldn't be meant for the heat like me. <laughs> <laughs> no. no. But he's surviving anyway. But he, 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 he find a big change, yeah. On the other side of the county, Sheila Hackett's home was also upgraded. Sheila's partner Liam and their two daughters suffered from asthma, which was exacerbated by the damp and mouldy conditions in their home before the upgrade. Holly showed me the inhaler she no longer needs. You take off the lid like this, you stick it in here, you put your mouth on it, and you press it down, and 
it'll go in and you'll have to breathe in and out five times. You'll have to take a drink after it because it tastes it's yucky. Almost immediately we, we saw the difference in the two the two kids. Isla doesn't cough at night anymore. Holly doesn't cough at night anymore. We don't have to give her an antihistamine going to bed for her nose to unblock. Um, she doesn't need to take an inhaler. The girls are going to grow up in a house that's healthy and clean to, and safe to live in. So Paul, retrofitting homes will benefit air quality. We're removing combustion from the home. So that removes all particulate matter from the home in, in totality. There's the indoor air quality benefits for health of the occupants of the home. There's the monetary benefits for the home. There's the monetary benefits for the state. And there's the creation of jobs. The, the list of benefits is endless. And the challenge is how do we unlock the potential of these benefits for society? <laughs>